Hello friends and neighbors. How's everybody doing out there in YouTube land? Welcome to this coffee and correct grammar. Got my coffee. I use the term friends and neighbors because that's what I would like to think of everyone out there as. And I got that from a, a gentleman named Otis Gibbs. He's a very talented musician. You might want to look up his YouTube channel if you like music, country music, uh, outlaw country music in particular. He's, a, he's an OG, basically, and tells some great stories on his YouTube channel. Okay, the first thing I'm going to cover here is about four days ago, I posted a uh, grammar challenge in the community section of my YouTube channel. It's a screenshot uh, from someone on Twitter named colon L O G L period Q hyphen T E C H with no full stop after it. Um, I guess it's at Clarence Good Five is the uh, I don't know the Twitter address. Anyhow, I'm going to read it in plain English. As to what it says, it says for the call hyphen out of the fake hyphen. When I say hyphen, I mean the symbol. Fake hyphen postmasters is with the Jason hyphen Paul colon space Greaves comma Mark hyphen Kishon colon space Christopher comma Jason colon space Glass with the and and this video is not for children. And I've made it such, so I'm going. I'm just going to say these words, okay? Just letting you know. With the fucktard hyphen brains by this postmaster hyphen quartermaster hyphen live hyphen life hyphen claimant hyphen Clarence hyphen Junius colon space goody period space colon space Jason of the particular comma if hyphen I, hyphen C, hyphen U, hyphen U, hyphen better, hyphen fucking, hyphen run, period. Here's my first challenge. Read that backwards. <laughs> and good luck to you. So I'm just going to go through very quickly and syntax it. If you have, you, you know, you can open another window on your laptop or whatever and, and read along with me. First and foremost, the Twitter identifications, Logic, Q, Tech, and Clarence, Good Five, those are both pronouns. Four is a pronoun followed by the non-tangible contract adverb, the. Now we know in the rules of syntax, nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb in this case. The adverb is modifying call hyphen out into an adjective, which is now colored non-tangible contract of into a pronoun. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for an adverb or a break in the continuance of the evidence. So the, in this case, is an adverb modifying tangible contract fake hyphen postmasters into a verb followed by is which is an adverb modifying with into a verb and by the way in fiction babble a verb cannot be in verb unless it's being modified by an adverb and then the is an adverb modifying Jason hyphen Paul into a verb the colon after Paul functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence because this is quite obviously not correct sentence structure. Grievous is a pronoun standing by itself because it's followed by a comma, which is a break in the continuance of the evidence. Mark hyphen Kinshawn is a pronoun followed by a colon, which is a break in the continuance of the evidence. Christopher is a pronoun followed by a comma. Jason is followed by a colon, which makes it a standalone pronoun. Glass then becomes an adjective, which is coloring with into a non-tangible contract pronoun. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for an adverb or break in continuance of the evidence. The is an adverb modifying fucktard hyphen brains into a tangible contract adjective, which then colors 
non-tangible contract by into a pronoun, followed by the adverb this, which is modifying postmaster hyphen quartermaster hyphen live hyphen life hyphen claimant hyphen clarence hyphen junius into a verb. That's followed by a colon, which is a break in the continuance of the evidence. Goody is a standalone pronoun. And then we have a period, and then we have a space, and then we have a colon, and then we have a space, and then we have Jason, which is tangible contract adjective, coloring non-tangible contract of into a pronoun, followed by the adverb the, modifying particular tangible contract verb, and then a comma, and then it ends with the compound pronoun if hyphen I hyphen C hyphen U hyphen U hyphen better hyphen fucking hyphen run, period. Now let's go into the volition of this. In correct sentence structure, the verb of the thinking is put out there so you can look at it. What is the volition of this author? To me, when I read it, my perception of it is this author wants to do more than one person harm. They're slandering, they're saying bad things, wishing bad things, and threatening, basically. And, you know, if you see other posts by this author and other authors that agree with him, you will see this very same volition, which is not correct. By the correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, finite mean of what correct means. So that's the closure on that. The next question that no one chose, actually, by the way, in the poll that I posted yesterday. Have you ever met anyone in person who knew about correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar? My answer to that is yes. And that is when I went to Florida to meet my student, colon Ricardo, colon Marseille which is one of my best students, actually. Other than that, no. And I've been to, you know, through airports. I've boarded government vessels, spoken with military, um, court clerks, attorneys. No one that I've ever met in person ever gave me a hint that they knew what correct sentence structure was other than what I was teaching them or telling them at the time. And this calls into question, and I know it's kind of taboo to question Colin David Eiffel Wing, Colin Miller, because a lot of people put him up on a pedestal and idolize the guy. And my comment on that is, I have much gratitude to Colin David for what he shared with the world. And for the time, the now space that he gave me the year before his death when we were in communication on the telephone and things like that. His grammar performances, well, you can just take that, um, look at his book, and, and you'll see what I mean if you know anything about correct sentence structure. But he made the claim that there were 10 billion people on planet Earth and that 5 billion of those people were his students based upon hits on his website. He said this. That means that when I walk out my door, one out of every two people are going to at least know what correct sentence structure is or have heard of it. And that's just not the case. Why is the sequence of positional so important? Well, because if you don't follow the strict sequencing of positionals, the mathematical of inter interface on the grammar is not going to be correct. And it's not going to be correct sentence structure if you don't follow for the cause of the concern is with the possessive of the concern with the possessive by the authority. If you don't follow that sequence, it's not going to be correct sentence structure. It's not going to be mathematically certified. It's that simple. I had a good friend uh, the other day asked me about using other positionals other than for, of, with, and by. I think they wanted to use on and maybe in. I'm not sure. I think they wanted to add like three or four other positionals to the list. And the problem with that is we have four positionals. Each of those positionals 
has one function and one congruency because in correct sentence structure, one word, one meaning. You can't have one word and have two meanings for it. That's not correct sentence structure. That's fiction. So we already have a cause. We already have a concern. We already have a, a possessive. We already have an authority. So if you're going to add other positionals to that, then you're going to have to create other functions other than a cause and a concern, a possessive and authority. And then uh, my friend came back and said that he's not using correct sentence structure. And then I said, oh, well, that's okay. Well, he can do whatever you want then, because that's what fiction does. They do whatever they want, make up their own rules, and they change them all the time. Correct sentence structure is very strict about the positionals and the functions and the one and one. That's why the sequencing of positionals is so important. Okay, the last question, why isn't there an app for syntaxing? or a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, translator? That's a very good question. Ever since I started this in 2017, I've been asked that question. I asked it myself when I first started. And then after I learned it and gained closure on the grammar, I realized why there isn't. There are guys out there, computer tech guys, who have been trying to do this for years, but they can't do it. The reason why I think, and this is an opinion, this is a guess, is that AI just does not have the capacity to certify whether a term is tangible contract or non-tangible contract in the way that we can. It's just not gonna work. So anyone out there that's using anything that's close to that, I would love to see it because I have not seen one thing that's correct. It's hard enough for a man or a woman to be able to understand this and, and be correct with it, let alone a computer. So that's the answer to that. And by the way, you know, if you are a computer programmer, you're more than welcome to give it a shot. Give it a shot. See what you can do. Why not? I might as well just, since we talked about the positionals, I might as well go through the creation of a correct sentence structure, which, by the way, is available on my YouTube channel. I have multiple videos explaining and giving closure to this subject from many different angles and using many different lenses. I created the videos, took the time, the hundreds of hours to do it. It's contingent upon you as the viewer to take the hundreds of hours of study. Uh, but I'll try and go over it real quick for you right here, right now. So, When you start a correct sentence structure, you got to think of the cause. What is the cause of what you're saying? Where's it coming from? What's the source of what you're saying? For me, in my claims, everything comes from my port of sensation, of which I am the port authority. Okay? What do I mean by port of sensation? I mean your senses, what you sense, your firsthand knowledge, your sight, your smell hearing, touch, taste, and whatever other senses that one may have, those are the ports of sensation. Stimuli come in from that to the port and dock. And I, as port authority, I give authorization as to which stimuli come through. And then when it comes through, I congruent I am congruent with the, what those things are, and I formulate knowledge as claims and ship it out for the claimant's knowledge. That's why I always say in my correct sentence structure claims, and you can read it in the description to my videos, for the claimant sensation of the cognition is with this correct sentence structure, communication, parts, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by this claimant, period. I'm telling you where my knowledge comes from. It comes from my port of sensation of which I am the port authority. And you are also the authority of your port of sensation, unless, of course, the copyright copy claim on your live life claim belongs to someone else. Then you are not the authority of your port. So in the cause position, we always start with a four, F-O-R, which is positional, one of the four positionals, F-O-R, it positions the lodio and the fact. It's the beginning of it. It tells the function of what that fact is doing. 
And in this uh, example I'm going to give you, the first line would be for a writ hyphen claim, which just basically means a written claim. What is a lodial then? A lodial just determines location. It's a word that tells you what kind of fact it's going to be. Is it going to be a fact, the fact, my fact, your fact, his fact, her fact, their fact, the fact, whatever fact it is, that's the lodial. It's, it's giving closure as to what fact it is. So you have the FOR, which is the positional, positioning the fact as the cause. Then you have the lodial. In this case, it's going to be A, singular, and then writ hyphen claim, which is the third word in the position lodial fact phrase. Writ claim functions as the fact. And in the fact position, you must have positive performance words. You would not use particles of negation. Now, there are instances where you would have to use particles of negation. Not Well, not necessarily have to, but for the ease of communication, you would use it. And in that case, you could underline it and put sick after it, or you could use brackets and bracket out the particles of negation if you so choose. But I've covered that in other videos, and you can research that yourself. So then the next sequencing of positionals is of, which is concern. Remember, one positional, one congruency, one function. And of's function is the concern. And I used to teach that as the consequence. You would have the cause, the consequence. But sequence, with my knowledge, is no contract. So I don't use that. I found the word concern which functions the same way. Of is the concern. It's telling you what the cause is concerned with. And in this case, the concern of the cause is the facts. The is the lodial, facts is the fact. So far we have five, six, seven, five, six, seven. Now, we have our two points for a writ claim, of the facts. We can draw our straight line. We've established our geometric level plane field of communication. Now we can drop our verb of the thinking in. Now the verb has a function. It has a position. It's locked in. Verb is cogitation. It's thinking. It's movement. You're moving the cause and the concern into the possessive of the next section along that same line. In this case, the verb is is, which is singular. There are two verbs, is and are. Are is plural. The cause of the correct sentence structure determines the plurality or singularity of the verb. The cause does that. Nothing else. So now we move into the possessive. The possessive is the positional with. With always follows the verb. You would not follow the verb with any other positional other than with. What is with possessing? It's possessing the facts. It's possessing the cause. It's also possessing what comes after it. And then what comes after with is the. The, in this case, the lodial, six, positioning the fact, correct sentence structure conveyance. So we have, for a writ claim of the facts is with the correct sentence structure conveyance. We have a cause, concern, verb, possessive. What is the possessive concerned with? Of the knowledge. Again, one positional, one congruency, one function. Of, when it comes after the verb, maintains the same function as it did before the verb. One positional, one function of the knowledge. What is possessing the knowledge? Now we have another possessive after that one. With, positional with, the cognition. Cognition is the fact. It's the cognition. The is the lodial. It's telling you who or what cognition it is. It's the cognition. It could be my cognition. It could be your cognition. But in this case, it's the cognition. And then finally, at the end, we have the authority, which is by. 
by functions as the authority. Again, one congruency, by is congruent with for, of is congruent with with. So that when you do the mathematical interface and you flip it and read it backwards, it makes sense mathematically, just like a math problem. One plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. The positionals have the same function as the plus and minus sign so that you check your problem forwards and backwards. So in this case, the authority is by a claimant's hyphen sensation period, which I just explained to you in the section prior to this. So you have for a writ claim of the facts is with the correct sentence structure conveyance of the knowledge with the cognition by a claimant sensation period. Now, how do we check this forwards and backwards? Backwards, by becomes for because there's one positional, one congruency, one function. By becomes for, with becomes of, and that's how it works forwards and backwards. By, okay, for a claimant sensation of the cognition. I'm going backwards now. For a claimant sensation of the cognition. For a claimant sensation is the cause. Of the cognition is the concern. You draw your straight line. Now we put our verb in again because you only have two position lodial fact phrases in front of a verb at all times, forwards or backwards. That's the mathematical certification. Is with the knowledge of the correct sentence structure conveyance with the facts by a writ claim, period. Forwards and backwards, same value, mathematically certified, that's how it works. And you can find that very sentence that I read at the location of um, my Weebly blog site from December 12th, 2020. And all right. Wow. Still no grammar questions. I got some appointments coming up here, so I'm going to draw this to the close uh, in a minute here. I'll just give you, the viewer, friends and neighbors, a couple minutes to type in a question or anything you want to say and I'll address it and then I'll draw it to a close. You can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 uh, at gmail.com if, if you have a grammar question or if you want to apply for a confidential workshop. Um, you're more than welcome to do that, to learn this stuff, much in the same way I'm explaining to you here um, I would explain it to you there. That's why people contact me and they, they like to do the workshops because they can ask me the questions right there face to face. Um, and I'll give them the closure like that. Or of course you can take the time to study the videos. Uh, there's nothing in the workshops that isn't on this YouTube channel. Everything is available to the public. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is secret. What you see is what you get, pretty much. It's all up to you, what you want to put into it as to what you get out of it. That's just the way it works. Rule one, rule equal. Tyler Powell's. You're very welcome. Also remember your facts in your correct sentence structure your facts, your positionals, your, your lodials, your verbs, your conjunctions, you would have to give closure to that in your dictionary, your own dictionary. You would have to give correct sentence structure closure, finite means. And I've given closure to what finite means, what that means in other videos as well. Um, that's contract closure. But that's a whole other thing too. You'd have to get into the 12B7, the flag mechanics, the postal mechanics, all of those things. But the grammar comes first, always. You must have a grammar knowledge base, at least rudimentary. I would advise. I'm not saying what you must or mustn't do. When I, let, me, let, me re, let me rephrase that. I highly recommend getting closure on the grammar or at least a rudimentary cognition of it before you go and do a document contract postal vessel court venue on your own because 
the days of just copy and pasting a template are, are over by my knowledge. Maybe back in the late 80s or early 90s, you could take a template out of Colin David Eichenwin, Colin Miller's book and use it and it might work for you. However, I don't know anyone that's ever done that and been successful, granted. But it's always the best bet, in my opinion, and with my knowledge, to have closure on what it is you're doing before you do it. Adverbs are pure modification. You could almost say they're a figment of your imagination. An adverb is a no verb. AD means no. So I do have a video about that as well. It's about a half hour long. It's actually one of the best pieces of work I've done. I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's for the clarity and closure of the two specific syntax scenarios. And uh, it goes into what an adverb is, what a verb is, what an adjective is, what a pronoun is, what a positional is, what a lodial is, what a fact is, past tense, future tense, conjunction. It gives closure to all of those things. And why a vowel in front of a consonant means no. And why two vowels in front of a consonant are positive performance. It gives closure to all of those things. So in correct sentence structure, we basically have, I guess what you could be considered 10 parts of speech, including the conjunction. Zero is conjunction, one is adverb, two is verb, three is adjective, four is pronoun, five is positional, six is lodial, seven is fact, eight is past tense, nine is future tense. This is interesting. There's someone commenting named AI period marketing space market bot space earn space up space two space 35% space cashback. Means nothing to me. Well, friend and neighbor, I would have to say it means something. If you're if you're studying it, it must mean something. I look at everything as, uh, to me, there's no such thing as wasted time. It's all learning experience and um, everything is. I just try to maintain everything on a geometric level playing field of contract because everything is contract. Everything is contract. We are in contract right now. If you are commenting on this comments field, you're in contract with me right now with this comments field. Um, if you don't mind, would you like to share your correct name? You know my correct name. You know what I look like. Uh, how about sharing your correct name so we can be on the geometric level playing field? Maintain the rule one rule equal. And by the way, I'm just asking you to share your correct name just because you know my name. And I'm just asking the same consideration of you. Although I do know that, uh, you know, people on the internet a lot of times don't want to give their, their names out for whatever reason. They like to use non de guerres and... But, you know, when you get into correct sentence structure, you will learn about the rule one, rule equal, and um, those types of things. And thank you for the kind words, uh, whoever you are. All righty. No grammar questions then, I see. I'm going to draw it to a close. Hope you found this helpful. I may or may not go back and edit this and put it together with some uh, bonus material or not, because it takes a lot of work and a lot of now space to do that, a lot more than I thought it would. Or I could just post it as is. Love what you do from emails. Again, that doesn't uh, tell me anything, friend and neighbor. I get a ton of emails, so I don't know uh, who you are. I can't guess as to who. Oh, okay. Oh, you're a lord? 
Wow. The only public claim that I use is Grammar Tutor. Correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, Grammar Tutor. I mean, in order to make a public claim, you must be able to back it up. Let's put it that way. And um, I've never ever claimed anything in the public other than Grammar Tutor, because right now I'm certifying it. I don't really know what it means to be a lord other than to parse the word to see what it is. You know what? I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to parse the word lord. Let's find out what lord is. Lord, mid 13th century. Lavard, lover from Old English. Master of a household, ruler, feudal, superior, husband. Also, God. Feudal. Okay, I don't like that word. In the New Testament, Hebrew, Yahweh. Yahweh means Lord. Old English, contraction of earlier, literally, one who guards the loaves from bread. Keeper, guardian of the loaves. From Proto-Indo-European root, W-E-R, perceive, watch out for. Compare lady, household servant, loaf eater. 14th century, owner of a land, houses, etc. Polite or respectful form of address to a nobleman under rank of duke into a bishop. Lord's Prayer, you're the Lord. God in Christ. Lord knows, expressing a state of ignorance. Lord of the Flies translates Beelzebub. Old English Beelzebub, pristine Philistine, sorry, God worshipped at Ekron from Latin, used in Vulgate for New Testament, Beelzebub, Lord. Oh, Baal means Lord. Late 14th century. Literally, owner, master, lord, B-A-A-L. A title applied to any deity, see Jehovah. Later, a name of a particular Semitic scholar, solar deity, worshipped licentiously by the Phoenicians and Carthaginians from Baal. He took possession of, he married. Name of Marduk. Wow. The name has also been used figuratively in English for any false god. Whoa. A lot of stuff going on in the etymology of Lord. Okay. So I don't know if you've done any research on that, friend and neighbor. When you're going to make a public claim, you got to really, it's highly recommended to research and parse the language, the grammar that you're using. Because if you, if you, are not going to be a steward of your grammar, then someone else is going to control your grammar. Period. End of story. So what I just did there, I just showed you the nativity root meanings of the word Lord. And there are definitely some modern and not so modern negative connotations rooted in that simple little four-letter word. <laughs> All right. So thank you for sharing that colon Wasim colon space Malik. I appreciate your participation with this comments field. Again, I might post this, I might not, because the value of this type of thing is participating with it in the now space. Thanks and take care.